in today's video. I'll show you how you can master 3D camera in After Effects in order to you to make amazing motion design and become a pro using 3D camera. So without further ado, let's open After Effects and let's get into this. So let's start by creating a new composition, call it 3D camera, making sure that our comp size is right. We're gonna use 60 FPS and let's do 15 seconds for the comp. I'm gonna press on OK, and right away I'm just gonna do a quick and simple background for our animation. So right here I'm gonna right click, new, solid, for the name I'm gonna put BG as background, and on a color instead of white I'm gonna choose a maybe washed white, more pushing the grays just like this, and press on OK. Right away I'm gonna copy paste the background, rename it to grid. And as we rename it we're gonna go to effects and presets and apply a grid effect just like this. Let's customize the grid a little bit. So on grid, on size form, instead of corner pin, I'm gonna do white slider. I'm gonna make my edges a little bit thinner by going on border and instead of five, I'm gonna put two. I'm gonna change the color of my grid using the pickup color tool and I'm gonna click right here on this gray. On width, I'm gonna put a 70. So now I'm gonna create a full white solid just like this, call it corners press on OK and I'm gonna create a mask using the Eclipse tool, something like this. There you go, let me just adjust it so it's more or less in the middle, something like this. Now I'm gonna go here on the mask, invert it and go on the mask options and put the feather around 350, something like this. Now I think the grid is too popping for my liking so I'm gonna go on the grid again and I'm gonna go to color and choose a lighter shade of gray just like this. Cool. With the background done, let's create our first text. So I'm gonna press on Ctrl T or Command T if you are using a Mac just like I am, and I'm gonna click on our comp to create our first text. I'm gonna write define your first point. Now I'm gonna customize this a little bit. Now, just to make it look cool, I'm gonna create a new rectangle shape. I'm gonna overlay into first point, just like this. I'm gonna put the fill color on yellow, just like this, press on OK. Now I'm just gonna go to mode and put on darken. And as you can see, it gives such a cool effect. So now let's get into it. So let's right click, new and camera. And right here, this can be super confusing. There's a lot of options, but I would recommend you just using the presets. There is multiple like 50 millimeters, 20, 24, 35, but the most common one is 50. These presets are the same as camera lenses in real life. So you need to make sure that you choose the best option for the work that you're trying to do. I normally go for 50 because it's the most common one. So let's click on OK and right away create a new null object. And let's parent the camera using the parent and link tool, let's parent into the null. So why do we do this? First things first, to have two points of animation, to smooth it out our movements by overlapping, so we always feel like it's moving. And of course, everyone loves a smooth animation. And also to move horizontally and vertically that you cannot do from the camera itself. You need the null in order to do that. So let's decide our first effect. So for the beginning, I think I wanna do a zoom in. So in order this to work, we need to make everything 3D. Let's also apply motion blur to everything. It always looks cool, a little bit of motion blur. And now if this happens to you, it's just a matter of layering. So what I want you to do is right here on one view, you click and go on two views. And right away you have this panel. And as you can see, our background and our text are overlapping each other. So what we have to do is click on our shape layer and on our text and just move it a little bit forward, just like this. So now we're having the same issue with the text and the shape layer. So let's grab on a shape layer and just drag it a little bit to the back. And as you can see, we have our comp fixed. So as I said before, I wanna do a zoom out on the beginning. So let's go on the camera, let's keyframe position and point of interest. Let's drag these keyframes a little bit further. And now I'm gonna introduce you three new tools that you should use. And the shortcuts are one, two, and three. So for one, you would rotate around your composition, your camera. 
For two, you will move around like you're moving an image on Photoshop. And on three, you're gonna zoom in and zoom out. And as I said before, I wanna do a zoom out for the intro. So I'm gonna go here on this little icon and choose the proportional grid. So right here, I'm gonna put my mouse on the middle and just zoom in just like this. And as you can see, we already have an animation. Let's smooth it out. I'm gonna highlight all the keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant and easy is. Now I'm gonna go here on the graphs. I'm gonna click and drag the last keyframes and on this little dot, I'm gonna grab it and drag it all the way to the left. Now I'm gonna do the same for the first ones. I'm gonna click and drag and drag everything to the left. So what this does is what we call an entry curve. It starts super fast and slowly loses the velocity. So if I play it for you now, as you can see, we have a smooth animation zooming out to our first point. If you want to make this a little faster, just drag the keyframes and drag it a little bit closer to the first ones. And same goes the other way. If you want a little bit slower, just drag the keyframes apart a little bit. Now let's sauce this up a little bit and let's select our text, go on effects and presets and search type array. So this type array is a preset that you can do in your videos and as you can see it looks like this this is completely for free and i'm gonna put here on the description down below so i love the default animation as it is but if you're not happy with it you can just go here on the settings of type array and change the parameters around for your own taste now it looks kind of weird having this bar at the beginning so let's animate that as well so let's select our shape click on s to bring the scale levels let's disable the link option but before we animate it let's put the anchor point of our shape layer at the left so by pressing ctrl or command you can see when you move around it magnets to the center of it. So now it's centered, and now I'm gonna go all the way to the left, pressing Alt as well, and as you can see, it magnets right here. So now if I move the scale around, you will see that it comes from that point. So now let's also press U on the camera so we can see the keyframes that we did, and I'm gonna match the keyframes of the shape layer with the camera ones. So by pressing J and K, I can move around keyframes freely as we want. So matching our last keyframe, I'm gonna keyframe the scale, go to the beginning and put it on zero. And as you can see, we already have the animation of the scale. Now let's do the same thing as we did for the camera. Let's right click, keyframe assistant and easy is. But this time I'm only gonna bring the last keyframe all the way to the left. We still have an entry curve, but now it gains velocity and then slowly loses the velocity as well. So if I play so you can see it, it looks like this. Of course, you can personalize this the way you want, and to be fair for my liking, it's a little bit too fast. So I'm gonna drag these keyframes a little bit apart so it looks like this. As you can see, for me, it looks way way better. Cool, so now that we have our animation set, let's duplicate our text so we can do our next point. So let's bring it somewhere like this. And now you will start to understand why I did a new layer. So if I go here on the camera, you will understand that keyframes work from point A to point B. So if we want to add another animation here, we'll need another keyframe. And if we want to smooth things out, this will look so stiff because animation one will start and then animation two will start. And that's not what we want. We want smooth camera animations. So this is why we use the new to overlap animations. So the animation never stops and always feel smooth. So animating our new, let's press on P for position and shift S for the scale. Now I'm gonna go a little bit further, just like this around here. So as you can see, we can overlap the last animation. Let's keyframe it and now go a little bit further and let's put the position just like this. Let's now make sure that we center our next text and let's apply a little zoom in on it as well. For this, I'm gonna enable the proportional grid as well. And this looks just about right. Let's also select our new text and bring it a little bit forward using the Z tool, just like this. 
And because we're triarding, let's rotate a little bit of our text and adjust our shape layer just like this. I'm also going to introduce rotation to our new and for this it's going to be the Z rotation. So I'm going to go back on our first keyframe, keyframe it back on the Z position. I'm going to rotate it so it looks like our text is straight. But as you can see on the other one, it's rotated a little bit. And now you can be mentioning that our background is gone. So let's fix that. On background, let's just put the scale a little bit bigger and on a grid in the corners, let's just search for motion tile, drag it into the grid and on output, let's just put it at 400 and same goes for the height. Now I can just copy this motion tile and paste it on corners. And as you can see, our background is fixed. Now let's smooth our keyframes. Let's select them all, right click, keyframe assistant and easy is. Go on graphs editor, do the same thing. And now I'm just gonna do a normal entry curve just like this. And again, it gains velocity, it picks velocity and slowly it loses the velocity. So if I play it for you right now, and as you can see, there we have it. In this graph, I change it a little bit. Instead of an entry curve, I change for 60 and 60 influence. In case you don't know what that is, if you drag these little dots, you will see speed and influence. You do this graph that I call the smooth mountain and the smooth mountain just makes everything start super slow and steady, gain velocity and then slowly dries down as well. It looks amazing. Also, I applied the same animation right here to our new text. And as you can see, I overlap it a little bit and did the same animation for the second part shape layer. Cool, so now let's do our last point. And for this, so you don't say that it's only text, let's apply some cool icons. So I'm gonna create a new comp, call it icon box, put all of these icons that I found online right here. Now I'm gonna create a rectangle tool around these icons. I'm gonna remove the fill and apply a stroke. Go here on contents, rectangle, rectangle path, and put the roundness a little bit high, just 45 would work. Just gonna adjust the sizing a little bit of my liking, center it up, put the stroke a little bit bigger. Now I'm gonna grab these arrows, choose the most basic one, size it down, rotate it up, animating the icons as well, using this preset from Animation Composer 3, that is free by the way. We can also animate the shape layer one with trim pads, keyframe it right here at zero and start on 100. As you can see, we can also do the graphs for it. And let's not leave our arrow left. So let's pre-compose it, move all attributes to a new composition, call it arrow, let's duplicate it. And using the brush tool right here at the top, let's draw the animation of the arrow that we want, something like this. And now if we go here on effects, paint, brush one, stroke options, let's right here put the keyframe on an end and go back to the beginning and put it on zero. Now let's duplicate it again. Let's remove the paint and track mat our brush into our new comp. Let's make sure that we click on the one that has paint and put it on paint on transparent. And as you can see now, our arrow is animated. Let's go back to the paint and on color, let's just use black. And as you can see, it has animation. Let's select these keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant as he is and just do a simple entry curve. And there we have it. We have everything on our comp animated. So now let's go back to our main comp, drag this new icon box composition into the main composition. Let's put it as a 3D layer. And now it's time to position it into our scene. So let's drag it a little bit further because we want it to start a little bit later. I'm gonna grab our box just like this, put the two view side and I'm gonna bring it super forward in our scene, something like this would work. And now, as you can see, we will go for the null, but our animation starts before our null ends. So, is it fixed to this? There is multiple ways that you can do this. My favorite one and the one that gives you most freedom to do any type of animation is simply creating a new null, just like this, and parent the new one to null two, put it on 3D 
and motion blur as well. And as you can see now, we have everything for us to use. So I'm gonna overlap the animation right now, just like this. I'm gonna put the Z rotation back to normal, adjust the position a little bit better, put the grid so I can guide myself and put this in the middle, just like this. Now again, let's smooth our keyframes. And there we go. Let's give it a watch. So it looks like this. As you can see, super smooth animations and everything looks amazing. Now you can mention that you cannot really read it because of the last thing that we did. So one thing that I like to do, I like to do this manually. I think it gives you the most control over it. It's simply by applying a Gaussian blur. Perfect. Now it looks amazing. So let's play it so you can see. Define your first point, now your second point, and something cool here. It looks amazing and especially super smooth. Now let's just quickly do a color correction so it looks even better. So here's the final result. And as you can see, it looks amazing. And this is how you can make your edits and make your motion design stand out by using 3D Camera. And if you want to learn more in depth about 3D Camera and every other skill that you need in order to succeed as a video editor, check out the Editing Nexus, a video editing community that teaches you the skills in order to you to become the dangerous editor and make sure that you stand out on the editing scene. Thank you everyone for watching and I see you in the next video.